Hello everybody, my name is Laurel Kastner and I am a senior biotechnology major at the University of Buffalo. Uh, and I'm gonna be presenting some work I did this summer at Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center studying exosomes and epithelial ovarian cancer. I'll start just by talking a little bit about that disease, then talk about the work I did, and finally about how research like this can help in providing new therapies for cancer and things like that. So to start with, epithelial ovarian carcinoma, or EOC, is one of four different types of ovarian cancers. It is the seventh most common cause of cancer and eighth most common cause of cancer death among women. It has a pretty low five-year survival rate between about 30 and 45 percent, and one of the reasons that is so low is because it has general symptoms, things like bloating and abdominal pain, which are hard to contribute to disease specifically, so it tends to be diagnosed pretty late, contributing to the lethality of the disease. One of the hallmark pathologies of EOC is that it presents with fluid called ascites, accumulating around the tumor as blood vessels leak out water. So this fluid contains things like cancer cells, molecules recruited by the tumor to enhance tumor growth and metastasis, immune cells, and exosomes. Exosomes are droplets formed from cells that are used for communication between cells. The way that they're formed is when cells pinch inwards and form these little packages. And inside of those are even little packages, which contain contents from inside of the cell, things like proteins and DNA. So when those little packages are released, those are the exosomes. And those exosomes travel to other cells where they can be taken up and they'll stimulate an action in that cell. So these exosomes are implicated in diseases, ages, and we can actually take advantage of them for therapeutics. In EOC, exosomes are involved in the suppression of T cells. And T cells are vitally important immune, immune cells produced by our own body that are important in attacking pathogens and keeping us healthy. So in EOC, when T cells are suppressed, it means they can't attack the tumor as strongly, and there tends to be a worse prognosis. The objective of our study was to analyze ascites exosomes with varying immunosuppressive activities and then correlate that with the origin of that exosome, the cell that it came from, or the identity as I'll refer to it, the concentration and the size of exosomes. So to start our study, we looked at um, the immunosuppressive ability of the different ascites samples. Ascites, again, is the fluid around a tumor, an epithelial ovarian cancer tumor. And to test the immunosuppressive activity, we kind of just looked at how strong the T cells were in that sample. Then we took the ascites and isolated the exosomes from it. Then we recorded the size of those exosomes using a zeta view nano tracking analyzer. And finally, we recorded the concentration and identity of exosomes using an image stream flow cytometer. This is a picture of what the image flow cytometer looked like at my lab. Um, and this is what the inside of that machine looks like. So as you can see, it's very, very technical. And that's because it is really hard to, to detect exosomes. They're only 100 nanometers wide, which is tiny. So you need a sensitive instrument like this to detect them. This is what the output from a imaging flow cytometer starts to look like. Um, in these graphs, each dot represents a single exosome and the squares around them are the identity of the exosome, the type of cell it came from. So like I said, we looked at identity, size, and co total concentration of exosomes. For those first two parameters, we didn't see a strong effect, but when we looked at concentration, we noticed that for a low suppression cell, like or a sample like this one, um, so 28% suppression, meaning that the T cells are more active, better able to fight the tumor, therefore better prognosis. And as you can see, there's a lot of exosomes here. Whereas on the other side, this is a sample with much fewer exosomes. And here there's a 74% suppression, meaning that the T cells were far less active, less able to fight the tumor, and therefore one would think have a worse prognosis. So we collected all of the data from the ascites and did see that there was a trend where more exosomes tended to have less T cell inhibition. There wasn't a statistical significant impact here, but it begs the question, is there some kind of overall helpful effect of the exosomes? And maybe the reason it's not statistically significant is because there's a balance of the helpful and harmful exosomes um, because you have Exosomes can be formed from all cells, including tumors and our own cells. So to wrap it up, immune suppression is important to look at 
way the diseases because it contributes to them, especially here at EOC. So identifying what drives depression could aid in treatment development and diagnostic development. So um, exosomes are already being examined in 210 clinical trials with applications for so many different diseases. And if you're interested, you can actually check that out on the clinicaltrials.gov website, where they have a, a huge list of all the clinical trials being studied that mention exosome or exosomes and all of the different diseases they're implicated in. That's my presentation. Thank you so much for listening and giving me an opportunity to talk about a topic that has sparked my passion for clinical research. I hope you learned a little bit about EOC some more, as well as the types of techniques being used to push the boundaries of cancer research. Thank you.